Welcome back to my channel everyone, Street Tips here. And what we're going to do today is fire up the 6 liter silver cell. And so I need to make some fresh electrolyte. I'm going to start out with some pure silver crystal from a previous harvest. And I think what we're going to do is go with uh, 1000 grams. This is about 400 grams of pure silver dissolved in nitric acid. I'm going to add this 750 grams. And this will make an electrolyte that's about 1100 grams total of silver dissolved in dilute nitric acid. That was 751 grams. I'm going to multiply that by 0.85. So we need about 640 milliliters of nitric acid. I'm adding some distilled water to about the 700 milliliter level. Now what we'll do is add some nitric acid to this water to make a uh, dilute solution of nitric acid. Let's see, 8 plus 6 is 14. So there we go. Now we've got a dilute nitric acid solution. Let me give this a stir. Get it mixed up real well. And now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add some of this nitric acid to our beaker that has our pure silver crystal in it that we want to dissolve to make silver nitrate electrolyte for the solar cell. Just like to point out that you'll have to do this in a fume hood. Uh, the gas you see being produced is nitrogen dioxide. And if that gets in your lungs, it will form nitric acid in your lungs. It will uh, condense and form nitric acid on your skin. And it's also been known to dissolve tooth enamel. So you've got to do this in a fume hood where the fumes are being drawn away. After this reaction calms down a bit, it's going to generate its own heat from the reaction. And then once it gets going, I'll put it up on the heat and we'll dissolve all this silver and make silver nitrate electrolyte for the silver cell. Here I'm dissolving some of the pure silver crystal to make a concentrated silver nitrate solution. I've calculated how much nitric acid I need to dissolve that amount of silver, but it was a little bit too much nitric, so I'm going to add some additional pure silver crystal here. And then uh, now what we want is to uh, continue to heat this until all the fumes disappear and there's a little bit of undissolved silver left in the bottom of that beaker. I can tell by the lack of fume production that the uh, silver has been dissolved. And if you notice, there's some silver left down in the bottom of the beaker, that's important because we don't want a whole bunch of excess nitric in our electrolyte. While I'm waiting for the uh, electrolyte to cool, I wanna get a measurement on this. We've got four inches between the bottom of the anode filter 
and the bottom of the solar cell. And if I lift it up, it's still got four inches of If I give myself another quarter inch, half inch down at the bottom, so I'm well within limits. Here's the anode filter from the last six liter solar cell run. What we're gonna do is get this out of here now and I'll save this material. It's got a lot of silver in it, as you can see, but it will probably also have some platinum group metals in it. So we'll save this filter and process it later on. I've got my new filter fitted down into the uh, anode basket. And I've got this spacer that goes here to hold the filter in place and keep the shot in there. And now I've got to figure out whether I want to put this shot in first or this shot in first. Let's see. Now we'll go with this one. I'm going to fill up the anode basket with our silver shot that we made from the uh, silver chloride conversion. It's going to go in the bottom of the anode basket first. Here we go. All right, there's our silver from the silver chloride conversion. Here's the silver from the cement silver that we melted into shot. I'm going to add some of this now. Oh my goodness. I took just about every bit of it. I've got a filter flask set up. And now what we'll do is filter the electrolyte that we just made. Here you can see the electrolyte is crystal clear and colorless and that's what we want to see that tells us we have some high purity silver from the electrolytic silver cell this is pulling through very quickly and there's nothing in the filter this is very clean silver nitrate electrolyte done with this filtering so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the filter off we're going to transfer it over here to another flask and this is about 1100 grams of pure silver in about two liters of solution I know I said I wasn't going to do it, but I think what I'll do is go ahead and uh, filter the used electrolyte from the uh, first 6 liter silver cell run. I'm going to use some of this for this run. While I'm waiting for this to pull through this filter, I'm going to get a little sample of our electrolyte in a container over here. Just a little bit. That's a little too much. I'm going to pour a little bit in here. Here's our electrolyte. And we just got done filtering this. This is the, from the first six liter silver cell run we're going to reuse it all right just to show you this is hydrochloric acid this is a sample of that electrolyte from the first silver cell run i'm going to add it in here and you'll see that there's still a ton of, sh of silver in here by the amount of silver chloride it forms Based on that test, looks like a lot, but there's not all that much silver in that electrolyte. So we'll add some of the fresh, new, freshly prepared electrolyte to augment the concentration of that used electrolyte. 
Here we go. We're going to pour in the used electrolyte from the previous silver cell run. This will have copper in it. But that's okay. Because we're going to dilute it down a little bit. Copper, I've been told, actually improves crystal structure and rigidity and growth. Okay, now what I'll do is add some of this fresh silver nitrate that we just made. And uh, I've got, I'm going to pour about a little over half of this in. Now what we'll do is add distilled water until it gets to the 6 liter mark in here. Let's get our top and set it on top of the silver cell here and we'll put the uh, anode filter basket in. It's probably got two kilos of silver in there. I'm just going to drop this right in now. All right, I've got to take this apart now. I forgot to put the uh, cathode connection on before I added the electrolyte. So I'll just disconnect this and then we'll slip it on there. Here's our anode electrode bar. That's going to go on the top of the uh, impure silver that's in our anode basket and by the way if you ever get one of these don't bend it down here if you need to bend it to get it to conform to the shape bend it up here to make it fit however you want because the more you bend it down here near this connection the more likely it is to break on you I've got everything set up and ready to go let's energize the power supply and see what's going to happen here. All right, we got 5 amps, 3.5 volts. And that is very good if it'll stay like that. The 6 liter cell's been running for about an hour and a half now. You can see the uh, amps are up over 6. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to adjust this voltage down. The max amperage on this power supply is 6 amps. And so I'm going to try to pull the amps down by adjusting the voltage down a little bit. There we go. At least we got it down to uh, 3.4 volts. That's fine. And now we're running 5.8 amps. Let's take a peek down in here and see what kind of crystal growth we got going on. Oh, look at that, man. Those are beautiful. Silver crystals are already starting to form on the walls of the stainless bowl, which is the cathode. I'm really loving this new silver cell. It's really processing the silver very quickly. There's probably two kilos of impure silver shot down in that anode filter basket. I've only got this much left, so I need to get a, some more cement silver melted into shot so we can keep this thing going for about two weeks and see what kind of yield we can get off of this. Okay, this will conclude the restart of the 6-liter electrolytic silver cell.
Thank you for watching.